as you speak, I, I cannot help but think how aligned philosophically you and I are. Um, I so often, as many of the people out in the audience today know, use music as an, an, an analogy, uh, use art as an analogy. And um, even the books that we quote, the wonderful book, uh, Flow, uh, by uh, Mihaly, Kitted Mihaly, uh, you know, we see, I quote that book in both my books as a great, um, it brought a lot of clarity to me and still does. So I, I continuously am amazed at uh, how similarly we see things and um, philosophically aligned we are. Uh, I could go on forever, but I don't want to be selfish. Uh, so I am going to ask a few more questions that I think everyone would want to hear the answer to. I mean absolutely no disrespect in the next question to anyone out there. I know you won't feel disrespected, but it seems somewhat misleading to even say there is such a thing as classical Pilates. Now, the closest to classical Pilates would be what you practice, um, because we all know, we have to acknowledge that anyone teaching, as you so eloquently stated, Ron, Romana, Kathy, uh, Mary Bowen, Lolita, another wonderful friend, and we all are influenced by our lives, what we do in life, our life experience, our movement experience, and that will feed into how we practice Pilates. So really, if there is a classical Pilates, it is what you're doing. And uh, if anything, we could say there are classical exercises and look at exercises that Joseph Pilates did and the way he did them. But to me, it just seems somewhat misleading to say uh, there is classical Pilates and this is classical Pilates. Well, yeah, we are aligned. I must tell you, Ro, I, I, I've just learned for the first time that someone else read Flow. I, I haven't read your book. I do your chair routine. Uh, 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 I do. I try to do your chair uh, routine, uh, uh, but I never read. I, I, I found the book strictly by accident, and I, and I found it did explain something that had been troubling me for years. But you know, when people come up to me, it, 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 it happened a lot when I lived in Colorado. They, they go off somewhere uh, and for three or four months and they, Seattle or, or Boulder, Colorado, and they'd come back and they'd open a studio with a big sign, classical Pilates. We only do classical Pilates. And, and I'd see them socially I was actually the mayor of the town, so I saw him a lot, uh, usually on the street, complaining about something. But the point being, uh, we only do classical Pilates. John, do you do classical Pilates? And I would say, you know, it, 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 there is no such thing as classical Pilates as a discipline. There are basic Pilates exercises. Uh, there is a varying degrees of interpretation of those things. But I can tell you when I, I'm now talking to that person kind of giving me uh, the raspberry about, about not doing so-called <laughs> I, I can tell you that if we all had stuck with what Joe insisted we do, and let's call that classical Pilates, you wouldn't be in business. I would be talking to you about Pilates. No one would know the name. It wouldn't exist. So it it wouldn't, it didn't even exist past 
Romana. She changed it and maintained that it was classical, classical, classical. And it took actually Ron Fletcher to really break the mold and say, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is, let's make this fun. I want, I want to have clients. I want to have a business. I want to have people I can teach to teach and I need them here and I need equipment and I need this and forget this business about having to do it a to Z exactly right. Get on the reformer and get off 44 minutes later and have done 42 exercises. And no, let's get the red towel out. Let's let's move our booty. Let's do this. Let's have fun. Let's do all this. And when that mold was broken, it was broken forever. And and everyone was set free. Go. Do it, have fun, remember what it is, try to get in touch with what it is. And all of you have done that by trying to go, to learn, to go to school, to, it's very hard. This is, you know, this is not, uh, you know, this is a, a difficult thing. And, and it's expensive and it's time consuming. And, and you're not going to end up making a billion dollars from something. You're going to struggle uh, through life, uh, working hard and teaching people. And, yeah, but it's extremely gratifying. But the point being, you all learn a basic stuff. You try to get into touch with why that's important to people. You have to learn or you won't have clients how to teach. You have to learn how to cue. Do you all cue exactly the same? I'm looking, I guess I got 50 people on the screen. I bet there's not two of you that teach this. I don't think you teach the way Raul teaches and he's the guy that taught you how to teach. So. You teach out of your own self. Yes, you start with certain principles, but you talk in the same voice. You use your hands the same way. Do you? No, of course you don't. You're people. You're you. You're individuals. You chose this exercise that part of your psyche that you wanted to exercise. So. Yeah, I mean, when people advertise, it, it annoys me. I'm way past getting too upset about it. I'm way past getting too upset about anything, really. But uh, certainly that. And, and I don't walk around trying to, you know, confront people. Oh, don't do that. That's wrong. But the point of the matter is, eh, all bodies is classical bodies and no plus is bodies. it's it you know and that was really it, in my heart when this horrible lawsuit started that any one person could possibly say they were the arbitrators and isn't. Pilates. And I, I, I still. And I think, in some strange way, uh, the lawsuit and uh, Sean Gallagher actually galvanized our community and gave us the fuel that we needed. And we are what we are today because of that lawsuit. So uh, I think in, in some strange way, it fulfilled a very positive milestone, despite it being a rather ugly period. I think it actually has worked out to be uh, very good for us. Um, John, I, can, can you- well, I, I, Are you with us? I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah I definitely agree with that, Ro. The it, it, I mean, of course, PMA came out of that and, Kev, and uh, Kevin Bowen came out of that. 
and organized PMA. Uh, I can tell you though, at the early stage, when, when I first heard about it, got somewhat involved, I was never a, 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 a lawyer for any, any side in it, but I was an, certainly an advisor. Uh, it was all Ken. And uh, Ron wouldn't even join up at the beginning, much to Ken's irritation. Uh, and he, he said, look, I don't even use the name. I don't, I don't, and I don't give a damn about this guy. I can't do anything. But Ken, Ken, of course, his business was dependent on it. He, he didn't think that he could continue to manufacture equipment without using the name Pilates. And he also knew that in the great array of his customers, which at that time was not a great array, but was still maybe 20, they, many of them would go out of business if they had to, if they had to do two things. One, pay money, and two, be subject to, uh, well, Romana, some of them may have been able to live with, I don't know, but they couldn't live with Sean. I mean, he was impossible to live with. And so they'd be out of business. If they were out of business, he couldn't make equipment. He had just moved to Sacramento, opened a big factory up there, a big, by those standards then, teeny by today's uh, standard, but, and so he, he bet the ranch and he was all alone. I mean, people would sign up. He, he, he had a couple of foundations he created and people signed up, but th there wasn't any money around for it. There wasn't any energy. Uh, Pilates people, if you had to generalize, uh, they're not litigious people that want to get involved in court suits. They, you know, this is, a lot of them come from artistic backgrounds. This is not for them. And he was all alone and it did gallop. Then Ron turned and called him up and said, you know, I keep thinking about it. I owe something to Clara. I'm gonna do this. This is for Clara. And Ken said, welcome aboard. Well, that helped and then others came and uh, and then, of course, in the courtroom, uh, there were uh, 30 instructors, uh, you know, uh, some first generations. Kathy was there. Mary was there. Uh, uh, Lolita was there. Corolla, uh, I don't remember. Eve, I think, was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, they, and they were there religiously. And so they all sat the sort of back uh, far away from, from the uh, vituperative behavior up in front uh, as they could, but they were all there. And Ramana had to know that she was swimming against the tide. And uh, you couldn't tell from her because she just was that much of a, actress but uh it was there and you could feel it and then kevin brought it all together and uh the celebration of the victory became the foundation of pma mm -hmm. which became the foundation f for for kind of all everyone working together and the tragedy of Romana's life really is she didn't say, oh, it was a mistake. You're right. Let's all throw in together. And if you want to call yoga lotties, super lotties, golf lotties, whatever you want to call it, let's get with it and, you know, push this thing forward. And no, she didn't. She fought it tooth and nail and uh, it, it was tragic personally for her. It was, I agree with you. I shared many uh, good moments with her in the early years. And in fact, 
uh, hosted her in California at my studio, just as that all started. And it was, it was very sad for me to see the change in this person who suddenly had chains around her. And uh, it, it was uh, very sad. And, um, uh, you know, uh, you know the way it went. I know the way it went. And uh, I, I feel sorry, sorry that it did go that way for Romana. Uh, you know, I'm going to jump ahead because I know I don't want to take up too much of your time, John. But this is a very selfish question of my own. It's one that I've pondered for so many years. I'm putting it out there to all these hundreds of people that know me so well. And I'm going to ask you to help me, selfishly help <laughs> me. Uh, I have pondered for years. Um, would I have liked or even respected Joseph Pilates I've spoken about it many times to my 19 year old son who dabbles in philosophy, although his area of study is aerospace. And he reminds me, well, you can love the art without loving the artist. Uh, and I ponder, this is a man that was so diametrically opposed to what my belief system is, my value system, um, the, the humility that I try and embrace in life. And um, I try and come to terms, can I be, be so dedicated to the method without the man? Or was the man the method? And I have tried to come to terms with that. John, you know, particularly as an attorney, if I would walk into the shower when one of my female clients or even male clients are showering to show them how to clean themselves, uh, it would not be very well received. And even if I cued the way Joseph Pilates cued, um, it would not be well received. So John, I want turning to you to help me selfishly uh, come to terms with a method, a system that, that I have dedicated uh, well over 40 years of my life to. And yet when I hear stories of the person, I so want to admire, respect, and even love this person, at least like the person, but so many stories say to me that the person, not taking away anything from the genius of the method, but the person would have been someone very hard for me to embrace and like and respect. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I was, not even 30, and it was his 80s. And my relationship with him and the closeness that occurred, which I will be the first to admit was close only in the sense that it was Joe. It wasn't close like I have with my grandchild. It wasn't that kind of closeness it, it, there was this huge gap what you're thinking about in your head now is a gap free relationship how would you Raul having devoted 40 years of this react to to Joseph and I, I don't think I, 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 I try to, I mean, I, I'm completely understanding the quandary that you put yourself in, but I think what you have to put yourself in was a role that's quite young, uh, is somehow attracted to this method of exercise. Uh, and senses in the other person a force that's huge, that it's, it's either creative or it, it, it's a charisma there 
his very presence is charismatic. Everyone reacted to it. There wasn't a uh, Raul in the crowd that kept it going, I can tell you. There was me, and I was this sort of lost soul, but, you know, lost in a very uh, kind of comfortable way, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, I, and I think your son's right. You, you would you would respect his obsession. You would respect his dedication to an idea that he had in his head about the overweening importance of chronology. You would admire in many ways, the way he got people to do what he wanted them to do. He was really good at that. And, uh, and you would, I mean, I don't know much of a, excuse me, how much of a tinkerer you are, but you'd admire that. You'd say, wow, this guy, he, he sits down and thinks about how to make a machine that helps and, these aren't machines that, you know, do anything but help. They, you know, the mat work, uh, uh, the bed basium. I mean, say, yeah, well, geez, what a tinkerer. That guy's really, you know, he's, he's not only pretty good at inventing exercises and putting it together and not only really good at teaching, but he's got this other thing. It's all part of the same bundle of Joe. But would you say to him, hey, Joe, let's go out for a beer and maybe we'll go over to a hockey game tonight and see the Kings play, get smashed on the ice? No, you wouldn't do that. Uh, would you say, Joe, hey, hey, you know, let's have coffee uh, tomorrow. I got to talk. I'm so hung up on this question I got about who should be the mayor of Los Angeles or San Diego. Let's... Give me some. No, you wouldn't do that. Uh, you you wouldn't relate to him in that way, even as a young Raoul. I just coincidentally, for very hard to articulate reasons, got sucked into it. You know, and and I felt that way. I mean, I don't feel. I, I don't mean that in all negative. I mean, in a very positive way. I found an attraction in him to meet some need in my own life, in my own background, uh, that others may not have found. And I had this fabulous separation, cultural age, so it wasn't dangerous. It wasn't like I was falling in love with this guru that I'd follow everywhere. It had its own safeguards built into it. I, I think it's a great question. I don't think you're gonna ever answer it uh, satisfactorily, but I think your son's right. You, uh, you know, Picasso was an obnoxious human being. You're a woman, you couldn't stand to be around him, and yet, you know, they attracted to him like flies. And uh, uh, was he uh, Charlie Chaplin? I mean, he was a horror show, but uh, uh, you know, the art, it was the art there? Yes. Uh, was he creative? Yes. Was he inspirational? Yes. But would he be your friend? No. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, when I think of Obama, I think, gee, there's a guy I'd like to go out and have a beer with. I mean, yeah, it'd be great. And I've seen him on these TV shows, particularly with the food guy who unfortunately killed himself. I mean, he was a real, you know, he was a guy. You could play basketball in the backyard with him. Can you do it with other presidents? or other senators. No, you can't. It's, you know, but it doesn't take away from uh, their skill or their talent or, you know, their importance. Uh, uh, the personal thing 
you know, there's probably people in your life you can't stand anyhow. Some people can't stand their father-in-law or their son-in-law. Or they're sort of stuck with them. <laughs> uh, I you would have admired a lot about him. I will tell you that. And you would have taken a lot from him because you are very curious and you're open to thoughts. And there are probably things you would have found, Jesus, I just, oh, God, I don't, I'm not going out for a beer with this guy or walking to Central Park with this guy. But, you know, I, I think it's a good question. And I don't think you should <laughs> spend, <laughs> spend too much of your precious <laughs> energy uh, trying to get an answer because there is none. And uh, there's, there's not a, a, a role in the equation. It's not mathematics. If there was a, a mathematical equivalent of Raoul, and then you put it, and then you put an equal sign and found a mathematical equivalent of Joseph Hubertus Pilates, would they be equal or unequal? Who knows? But that's not how life works. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you've, you've, you've helped me. Uh, you've helped me tremendously. Uh, you've put my mind and heart at ease. And, and I think of the very different relationships that I had with, with Ron Fletcher and with Romana and uh, to a lesser extent, Eve and definitely Kathy. And they were all very different. And, uh, sure. you know, and, and, and I, I truly understand what you're saying. And, and you've actually helped me make a lot of sense out of it. You know, and another very deeply personal question I have to you. I've left the deeply personal ones for the end, John, and I'm I'm trying to get them in because I know people are writing that they have to leave there in Europe in different places. So I'm going to uh, let this be the last one, and it's probably the most personal of all. So, um, you know, being that I grew up as a, uh, a Jewish man, I am Jewish. I know you grew up in a Jewish home. I so admire your mother and father that they were uh, longtime clients of Joseph Pilates. I want to ask you, considering where Joseph Pilates was from and the time, the context, uh, the environment at that time, did he ever speak to you about his feelings about uh, Jews, about what had happened to Jews in Europe, uh, anything to, uh, relating to that? No, he never did. As I said, he, he never said one word about anything that had to do with the past. It, he, he just didn't do it. it. Yesterday was already gone for him. I have thought about that occasionally when I wrote the book, uh, you know, when he, particularly when he left Germany for good. And I try to explain or I didn't really explain it. I tried to understand it so I could make some narrative, some story about why he left Germany for good uh, to come to the United States. Uh, and, you know, I sort of ended up with uh, things were bad in Germany at the time, not only because of the impending Nazi party, but uh, because of uh, the economy was a complete wreck. German self-esteem, which was an important part of German life, uh, uh, Germans had felt very superior in many ways. My wife is of German descent, and he, she still has <laughs> this feeling about Eastern Europeans, of which I'm one. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it, it, a lot of reasons, uh, and I never, I never felt Joe had any prejudicial kind of thinking about about anybody. Really, he didn't. He didn't care. I don't know. If he knew I was Jewish. I mean, I didn't even know I was Jewish, really. I mean, my parents were absolutely, uh, they were not 
just assimilated. They were somewhat anti-Semitic. They wanted to get away from all of this, change my name or their name. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, you know, and I went to all, all, uh, all, all the places I was educated at were very un-Jewish in that sense, a military school in Indiana. I, there was only two Jews there till my brother came. And then there was a third. So, uh, uh, and then my university, uh, when I got to law school, of course, there were a lot of Jews, but uh, I, don't, I don't think he gave two seconds thought to, to that or to color. He didn't know anyone's name, much less their religion. I mean, he, he may have known Balanchine's name and uh, famous people, but only because uh, Clara drummed it into him. Uh, I mean, he knew who they were, and he knew they were very big in the ballet world, but mm -hmm. he, didn't know, he didn't know about it. He didn't care about it. They didn't care what you did, ever. And that's one of the things, that, you know, would discourage you or anyone else from being a friend of his, because he was not a friend to you. Right. He didn't care about you. Right. He cared about your health and cared about your body and cared about how you walked and talked and you know all your physical motions and carried yourself but did he care about your inner soul could you come to him and said jeez joe i've had the worst day with my wife we're fighting with you he would he would off you you feel terrible or if you asked him for help on some thing you know so uh, it, it had nothing to do with anything, it, right. religion. Right. right. Nothing. Well, uh, John. I'm here, you know, so um, anyone wants to ask questions. Um, you know, I, if you've got a couple of minutes, I'm going to open the floor to some questions. Uh, it's been absolutely illuminating. Um, I, I, it's made me reminisce about my times with uh, the, these dear friends that I've had over the years. Uh, you've brought such great context to it. I think one of our failings as human beings is that we tend to uh, create unrealistic uh, expectations or even pictures of what someone was. And I think what I found so refreshing about getting to know you a little better first through your book and now through this conversation, you bring such a real sense to the person, to the man, to the method. And that allows me personally to respect someone when it's unrealistic. Um, going back to that first question, I, I can't come to terms with it. And I feel you've brought such a, a realistic uh, picture and painted such an honest portrayal of the man, the method, what the studio was like. I, I cannot thank you enough for that. And uh, I'm so uh, really uh, honored that we came together in that Pilates style issue. It meant a lot to me that issue actually, because on the cover was uh, myself, you, Mari Windsor, her and I were the first two to be featured in Pilates style when it first started years and years ago. Oh. And so, you know, sadly, you know, she's passed away, but to be with Mari, with you, and then on the final page was a wonderful tribute to Kathy and some words from uh, me that I remember her saying to me. So uh, for some reason, it seemed like full circle and I'm so happy you saw it in the same way. I didn't think I'd talk about that today, but uh, I felt very uh, touched by that. So, uh, John, this is an exercise from one of our participants. How often do you practice Pilates? And what is your favorite apparatus or exercise? And by the way, I'm just going to squeeze in there. And I absolutely adore your teacher, Amy Havens. Send her my regards. And uh, but now I'll pass over to you. So how often do you practice? What is your favorite exercise and apparatus? 
Well, I think I answered this question. It, it comes up quite a bit. Uh, I think we practice, I practice Pilates every second of my waking day. Uh, I think I am conscious of my posture. I am conscious of my movement. I, I do not think for a moment that I disconnect from the essence of conscious movement. I, I don't think I do. Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes if a you know, dog jumps out when I'm taking a walk, I jump back and it's a reflex. But while I'm taking that walk, I'm trying to get my shoulders in a proper position. I'm trying to breathe rhythmically. I'm trying to expand my rib cage. I'm trying to keep very symmetrical in my motions. I'm trying to hold my, not let my head sink down and trying to, so I think, I think most people who do it, do it all the time. Now, when I do it in the sense of formal Pilates training, uh, you probably hit a guilt button somewhere, but I, uh, I, before the virus, I went into the studio twice a week, sometimes three, I sometimes would go, uh, 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 Amy allowed me to go use it by myself so I could do a reformer routine. I personally love the reformer. I just think it, it does everything. And as I've gotten old, I used to say older, but that happened. <laughs> I'm now on the ne next phase, <laughs> older. As I've gotten older, the, just the attraction <laughs> of lying down and doing leg work to start is irresistible. It, I mean, you just have to want to do it. And, uh, and leg circles and all the things you can do lying down. Oh man, come on, let me do it. And then of course that leads to doing the things that you do sitting up or standing up and all of that. But it's that warm up. even, you know, even the hundred is lying down plus. You start lying down. So, uh, I, I try to uh, do that. I'm, I'm getting a reformer here because it's just impossible to go anywhere now. I don't know how bad it is in, in your neck of the woods in California, but it's dangerous at my age anyhow. And I'm getting a reformer. I have a chair. I use your chair exercises uh, extensively. I don't do it as often as I'd like. There's something not as comforting to me. You're out exposed on the chair and the reformer, you're in a box, you're on, and I can visualize Joe being on his cot and uh, same thing. Uh, the, uh, uh, the mat, of course you could do that anywhere and it's easy virtually, but uh, there's, it, the machine, it, it's your friend. It helps you. The mat, <laughs> just something that keeps you from hurting <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I have a, a springboard. And it's almost like a tower, but you screw it up against the wall. It takes very little space. And there are several a series of exercises on it from standing to actually lying down. You can do leg circles and roll ups and all that stuff lying down and get the spring assistance and res excuse me, resistance. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty busy. Uh, uh, not, not as much as I'd like, but I'm old. I'm, 85. So I'm still doing it. It's, you know. Great. 
Doing amazingly well. Next question. Great. Well, I loved your answer about you doing it every waking hour. I love that. I say the same thing. What apparatus was there in the studio that we don't get to see today? Um, you've mentioned some of the equipment that is, is more unique and um, there's some that you spoke about actually in your book that we don't get to see today. Could you speak for a moment about those pieces that people may not be familiar with? I, I can't think of any really. Uh, you know, there are many studios that don't have the toe gadgets and the foot corrector and the breathing thing, but they exist. When you go to PMA, there's vendors selling them. Uh, you know, basically you have the reformer, you have the mat, you have the chair, which was not featured as much as it is today by any means and maybe you're responsible for that role uh, 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 you ha you have the tower the guillotine you have the the uh, pedipal is that what it is the pole uh, you stand up uh, back to uh, yeah, you have a lot of things you didn't have you have coral line you have all, all kinds of different things, but it, it's pretty much the same. I mean, I, I don't, I don't feel a difference. Mm -hmm. And what I, I just have to add this, it's not an answer to your question. But people want to think about the reformer, because it was invented in the late 20s. It was first made in the late 20s uh, on, the, uh, on the, a formula that's now made with springs rather than weights where, where the pattern was. And it's a machine that is basically, basically absolutely unchanged in nearly a hundred years. Uh, yes, there are adjustments is risers in the back and the leather straps are now ropes on some and but when you think of the components of the machine and what moves it's exactly the same exactly foot bar springs shoulder rest headrest moving carriage pulleys straps foot straps, hand strap, that's it, mm -hmm. that's it. 100 years, think of any other machine, except for maybe an egg beater. No one uses them anymore, mm -hmm. hand turn egg beaters. Uh, that's lasted 100 years, unchanged. Unbelievable. Pretty amazing. Unbelievable. Do you think Pilates will go extinct one day or do you think it will live on in the various arenas that it's used today, such as the medical arena, sport, fitness, and as its own entity? I, I, I had at one point some concern about its being a fad. I don't anymore. I one of the things that I had in my mind when I wrote the book is to help it not be a fad, try to quantify what it is, make it more real than something people did. It, it, it became such a popular thing to refer to. I mean, movies, uh, you know, they talk about a couple and and he said, where are you going? Well, I'm going to Pilates. Well, you know, 15 years ago, no one would have said something like that. I'm going to the gym or I'm going to run around the reservoir. Or I'm going to do this. I'm going to Pilates. It's part of the culture. They make jokes about people going to Pilates. You know, it's, it's novels. It's a, I, I think what's come about in the last 
20 years probably is an appreciation of of something that that's very important even magical at the core of it I, like yoga i mean i i don't want to compare them or uh, argue about it but there there is something so deep about it that i think that quality and the other side of the coin which is you guys the people want to teach it they want to do this uh it's not like oh i couldn't job and you know i ended up to do it to being a physical trainer i did that in college because i couldn't pass the sociology entrance exam what no this isn't that this is something people are attracted to they want to do it they spend a lot of money to learn how to do it they they work they work very hard to do it they work very hard in their daily lives to teach it uh to get clients it's 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 a tough business it's not easy and they have to deal with all kinds of cranky people so that need i think exists aside from any faddish quality it may have or popular quality i am i'm i'm very optimistic that this has become worldwide i mean that's the other thing you know it's not an american kind of joke it's it's this i mean i did yes last night i did brazil in portuguese i don't speak portuguese they gave me a wonderful uh interpreter it was great and you could hear people and people from portugal even tuned in because it was in portuguese mm -hmm. there's people that want to do the book in israel there's people that want to translate it into chinese there's it's all over the world and it's it that whatever it is that attracts people is very deep in the human psyche if that's true if that's true we can never know but if it's true then optimism is the only thing you can have because it's filling a human need it's not a human desire or fad it's it's there somehow I, I, there are no words really to explain that but it's there well uh on that very very optimistic note and uh i could not agree more uh with your optimism i concur i agree i support it and uh, we share that same optimism and if there's one thing we need in the world today it's optimism and uh, pilates provides <laughs> yeah. it John. it's been so amazing uh, sharing this time with you getting to know you just a little bit i hope there will be many more occasions one-on-one -on -one and in forums like this the studio our academy and our worldwide community is open to you always so thank you to you john first and foremost and thank you to all of the participants that have joined from all over the world, from Asia, Europe, South Africa, Australia. We will have this, an edited version of this. And what I mean edited, uh, everything will be there, but just some of the waiting time. Uh, initially, we will, can edit that out, but everything will be available for free online to you and uh, John, Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was my great pleasure, Raul. And, and I do feel I got to know you a lot better in a, in a very public forum. I mean, it's a strange thing. We can't hug. We couldn't hug if we were even standing next to each other. But uh, I think we did hug in, in, in an emotional way. And I hope everyone, you know, f felt good about it. Good, it's good. a wonderful thing. You yeah. couldn't, you couldn't find anything in life to be as wonderful as the Pilates community. You just couldn't. And, and that's a great thing.
I agree. I said that in the beginning you hadn't yet joined, but I said if, uh, or maybe you had, if there's one silver lining to COVID-19, it's provided these forums where we uh, can receive our much needed embrace from around the world. And today we really are putting our arms around the world and hugging each other, hugging the world. And um, I wish you all the best to everyone. Thank you so much.